Now, the Lagos state government has warned of a possible third wave of the coronavirus pandemic in the state. In a statement, the governor, Babajide Sonolu, reeled out statistics of the increasing number of cases and the need to buckle up, especially as the Islamic religious festival of Id il Adha nears. According to the governor, the number of confirmed cases, which had earlier reduced to 1% average as of the end of June, has suddenly increased to 6.6% rate as of Thursday, July 8. Mr. Sono is urging full compliance with all the protocols imposed in the country as he threatens to prosecute anyone found to have willfully flouted the protocols, particularly the travellers. Now, as at today, Lagos State had recorded a total of 60,366 confirmed cases of COVID-19. Of this number, 58,515 have recovered in community and over 1,000 are currently being managed actively in community as well. Over the course of managing uh, the pandemic, the Lagos State Government stated that about 4,382 patients have been admitted into various COVID-19 care facilities uh, in Lagos and it has registered over 400 fatalities. So far, the state reports uh, that over 500,000 samples have been tested in the state since the pandemic started. And today, the state can boast of 30 accredited testing centers, that is 26 private and four public health laboratories in the state. Well, to talk more about the threat of the third wave in Lagos, joining us is a public health physician, Dr. Shalom Glad you could join us on the program. I'm excited to be here, Melissa, and thank you very much. All right. Now, looking at the increase in cases, which we saw from Monday up till Friday, even though yesterday it appears we just had very few cases, but then there seemed to be a steep increase, pretty much what we're seeing around the globe. Are you concerned? Uh, Melissa, I was here five weeks ago, and I bluntly predicted that Nigeria is going to uh, slide into a third wave. And for me, it's, uh, it's not a surprise because um, uh, um, pandemic management is scientific. You can predict where you are and predict where you are going based on the data you know, that you are getting. And the data you are getting is a function of the measures you are put in place. Uh, for me, where our MPI went south, that was where we got it wrong. And uh, for now, I think we are still getting it wrong. And that's the fatigue. But, but on the other hand, you know that Lagos, I mean, since the beginning has been the epicenter. Um, looking at all of the tools, seeing as it's just, I think, vaccination in Lagos has just been about 1%. Um, do we have the tools? Do we? Uh, well, uh, we are in an unfortunate situation. Uh, how do I mean? Uh, we are not producing the vaccine. Uh, let me put it this way. We are begging for the vaccine, trying to see what we can get, you know, from our neighbors, you know, around the globe. So we are at the mercy, you know, uh, of these countries. If they give you vaccine, fine. If they don't, you're on your own. And um, uh, the number of uh, uh, vaccinated individuals, you know, we help a lot in combating, you know, uh, a third wave. How do I mean? Um, it has been said, you know, you know uh, the Delta strain had a rampage in UK, in India and, 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 and UK. And it has been said that uh, uh, the impact of data strain was felt majorly in, uh, in individuals who have not been vaccinated. So if we can increase the number of individuals who are going to be vaccinated, then we are sure that we're on the right track, you know, in containing the, uh, the wave of the uh, data, data strain. Just to quickly get your thoughts, um, Lagos State said people shouldn't patronize non-accredited COVID-19 treatment facilities. I mean, we had this problem at the beginning of the pandemic. Is there still fear that there will be stigma, discrimination, and people won't be forthcoming if they feel they have the symptoms of COVID-19? Well, if you want to ju judge by what has been ongoing uh, from the start of COVID-19 and now, uh, the level of stigmatization has reduced. In fact, right now, you will tell an individual that, you know, you have COVID-19. They say, no, you're joking. You must be joking and things like that. But before at the onset, people try to stay away from you, you know. So the stigmatization has reduced. Well, however, uh, in order to ensure that people are effectively managed, properly managed, it is important you go to accredited centers. And how do I mean? There's the issue of uh, I, uh, in, uh, need for oxygen, oxygen cylinders. You know, uh, it's not all the facilities that can provide that 24 7. You know, uh, then uh, professionals, you know, on board. Uh, um, um, you know, things that have to do with your vital science monitoring. So you, you, then facilities for testing, 
you know, these are things, you know, that will be done in accredited centers, which may not be available elsewhere. So don't model up, you know, uh, the management for us. Go to accredited centers so that you can be properly managed and can know what we are dealing with. So I think for me, that's, uh, that's what the fear is. Not really that the level of stigma is too high. It has really, really come down. All right. We'd like to thank you, Dr. Salamone, public health physician, for joining us on the so program. It's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you.